Hey y'all, it's DIY Alex, and we are back with another Cricut tutorial. And today I'm gonna show you how to make place cards using your Cricut Maker. I'm gonna be making these as simply as possible, so I think that any level of Cricut crafter could make this project because it really is super, super easy. So I'm gonna be making my place cards out of mostly basic shapes. To get started, I'm gonna go over to the design panel here on the left-hand side and click on basic shapes. And then I'm gonna insert a regular square. Then I'm gonna size the square for the outer size of my place card because I'm gonna have a small inner part as well so I'm gonna keep it selected which means that it's clicked on you can see it's highlighted here in the layers panel so we know for sure that it's highlighted and we're gonna go up to the edit bar to change the size now I'm gonna be changing this into a rectangle so in order to independently change these two numbers, I'm gonna click the unlock button so that I can change them to whatever dimensions I want. And for the width, I'm gonna change the width to 3.5 inches wide and press enter. And then for the height, I'm gonna change it to 5.25 inches high. Now my place card is going to be folded in half. So this is going to be the front side and then this will be the back side of my place card. Next, I want to change it to the correct color. So again, I'm going to keep it selected and up next to operation, I'm going to change it to like a a medium green type of color. Then because everything's gonna be folded in half, I wanna add in a score line. So to do that, we're gonna use the basic shapes once again. And all we're gonna do is insert the score line here, which is currently the first shape. Then I'm gonna take that score line and I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. Now you can do this using your mouse here and that little curved arrow, or if you go up under more, you can actually just rotate it exactly 90 degrees to make sure that it's perfectly straight. Next, I'm going to drag that line to the edge and then over to the other side and that's going to ensure that it scores all along the width of my place card then I don't want to spend the time to actually center it because I don't want to get it wrong so instead I'm going to use the align tool to make sure that the score line is perfectly centered so I'm going to click and drag a box around both and then I'll go up to the edit bar again and click on align and then I'm going to choose center vertically and that's going to put that score line exactly in place so then what what I'll do to ensure that the score line is going to score the center of every card is keep them both selected and then choose attach. So it'll look something like this. Next, I want to add the intersection of my place card because that's where the writing is actually going to happen. Now we are actually going to be handwriting these in for my baby shower when we get there. So I'm not going to be doing any writing ahead of time on my place cards, but I'm going to show you how to do that in case that's something you would like to do. So to grab that shape, I'm going to go back into my basic shapes panel again and I'm going to insert one of these rounded corner rectangles because I just like the way that looks I think it looks really cute of course you could use a regular rectangle as well then I'm going to change the width of that to 2.75 inches wide and then it's a little taller than I'd like it to be so I'm going to click on that unlock button again and I'm going to change it to 1.75 inches high. Then I'm going to be cutting these out of white cardstock. So I'm going to keep it selected and go over to operation and choose white. Then when I lay it on top of the place card, you can see that it's going to look something like this. Now, like I said, I'm going to be leaving mine plain, but let me show you what to do in case you want to write in the names or labels, whatever you're going to be writing on them using your Cricut machine. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate one of these place cards as an example, and I'm gonna change the color to a light gray so that it's a little bit easier to see. Then what we would do next is we would go back to the design panel and click on T for text, and we could add any text into the project that we'd like. So let's say I'll start with my name. Then I would drag it on top of my place card here, and next we would need to pick a font that is for writing, because right now this font is set to cut, so it's gonna look funky if I try to get that to write. So to find a writing font, I would keep my text selected and go up to the font section of the edit bar, and then I'd click on the drop down menu. And in order to find fonts that are have a writing ability, what we would do is go over to the filters here on the right hand side. And you can actually see that I do already have writing checked. So if I didn't, I would just come down and click on writing. And that way, all of the fonts that have the ability to write would show up. Now, as you can see, I am under the Cricut section of fonts. So these are Cricut fonts that have a writing ability. However, a lot of these are going to require Cricut access. So if you want to find fonts that can write and you don't have to have Cricut access for, 
you could go back to the filters and check the free section and then that would filter down to just a handful of fonts that can write and wouldn't cost you anything above normal. You don't have to have Cricut access for that. So that's a little pro tip for you. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the free section because I do have Cricut access. And we'll just pick a font here to show you an example. Let's say that I was gonna use, let's try this DTC cottage style. We wanted to do like a fun little script font. So then we would take a look at it like this. And actually, if I was going to use this font, I would probably adjust it a little bit. You can kind of see these transitions are a little bit messy. So it kind of depends on how many of these you have to write. If you're only writing a handful of them, you could use a font that you have to correct a little bit. If you're gonna be writing a bunch, I would recommend using a font that does a better job of kerning or um, spacing your letters correctly. So then if you had multiple place cards to write, once you get your font chosen and your first name typed in, what I would do is click and draw a box around both the text and the shape, and then click on duplicate here at the top of the layers panel. And then you could continue writing in your text. So next we could do Andrew, and then we would have to resize it, of course, because it's not gonna fit here. And then if you also wanted to get fancy, you could click and draw a box around both, choose a line and then center, and then Cricut Design Space will automatically center everything for you. Then you would just repeat this process for however many place cards that you have. So next, let's say we'd type in Jen and our um, place cards would look something like this. So then in order to make sure that all the writing happens exactly in the center of each of these place cards, what you would wanna do is click and draw a box around each one and then choose attach. So that could take you a little bit of extra time. You could do that as you go if you'd like, or you could do it at the end when everything is finished. But that's the process that you would follow if you wanted to write your place cards before your Cricut cuts them out. But again, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a box around all of these and delete them because I'm gonna be leaving mine plain. So next, in order to add a little bit of a flair to my place cards, I'm gonna add in a little Monstera leaf that I'm gonna be cutting out of gold foil cardstock because the theme of my baby shower is like a jungle theme. So I think the Monstera leaf would just add something really cute up here in the corner. So I'm gonna go into my image library and type in Monstera and we'll see what we find. I didn't mean to have that little period afterwards, but let's see if we can find something cute. So I'm looking for a really basic shaped Monstera because I don't want a lot of detail. I'm gonna be cutting this really, really small. And so I wanna make sure that I'm not going to mess up any details with anything like a stem or anything like that. And something like this would work, but I found one earlier that I liked better. Oh, here it is. I really like this one because it's just really basic and simple. There's no holes in it. There's no stem or anything like that. So I'm gonna click on this Monstera leaf to select it. And then I'll click the green add to canvas button. Next, I'm gonna keep it selected and come up to the edit bar and size it to 1.25 inches wide. That way it's gonna be nice and small. Then I'm gonna change the color to gold because I'm gonna be cutting it out of gold cardstock. So when I add these onto my place cards after I fold them, the Monstera leaf will go in the corner and look something like this. So I'm gonna show you a really cool trick if you are making a project like this because typically you would think that you would need to duplicate each of these for the number of place cards that you have. And I'm gonna be making like 30 of them them. So that's going to take a really long time and it's going to have a lot of parts. So instead of doing it that way, I'm going to show you how to make 30 place cards out of just one little example like this. At first, I am going to save my project and then I'll go ahead and click on the green make it button. Then when we get to this screen, I want to show you how to use the project copies feature of Cricut Design Space. Now, of course, this isn't going to work in every example because, for example, if you typed out all of your labels and you were going to write on them like I showed you before, this probably wouldn't work if you had those in there because you wouldn't want to multiply that again by 30. But if you were making this project and you wanted to come in, you could just cut the Monstera leaves and the outer place cards the same way. You would just have to cut your labels that you individually created separately. So I hope that makes sense. 
And if not, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to explain further. But since I only have one example of my place card, I'm going to use the project copies feature and type in the number 30. And then the key to this feature is that you actually do have to click apply. A lot of people think that it doesn't work because it, nothing changes after you type the number in, but you have to click apply in order for those changes to take place. Then you can see Design Space has made 30 copies for me. Now for me, the last thing I need to do is make changes to my material size because I have some different sizes of cardstock. I want to make sure that I cut the appropriate size. So for my white cardstock, I have some spare eight inch by eight inch square paper. So I'm going to change the material size for this one to six inches by six inches. Now, of course, that's going to leave an extra two inch border around all of my paper, but that's the closest paper size that I can find to what I actually have. And you'll also notice when you change the material size, it's only going to change the material size by each color. So it only set the white cardstock to the six by six size. Then I'm going to come down here to my gold mat and I need to change this one to eight and a half by 11 because that's the size of the gold foil cardstock that I have that rearranged everything for me there. And then I do have 12 by 12 cardstock for the green. So I can go ahead and leave that to be. So once I have all my mats adjusted and ready to go, then I'll click on the green continue button and that will take us to our make it screen. Now I am going to be changing the cut setting a little bit because for the white cardstock, I'm going to be using the light cardstock cut setting but for the foil gold cardstock and for the green, I'm going to be using the medium cardstock cut setting. So keep in mind that in between colors, you may have to change out your cut settings if you're using different weights of paper like I am. So I'm going to go ahead and select light cardstock and then I am going to select remember material settings. So I'm just going to have to remember to come back and change these when I change over to different types of cardstock. Now let's hop over to my Cricut machine and I'll show you how to cut each of these types of paper. And then I'll show you how to assemble your place cards. So first up is my white cardstock. So I'm going to place my sheet in the upper left hand corner of my light blue light grip mat. Then I'll open up my Cricut Maker 3 and I need to spread out my star wheels. So that was left over from my last project. The star wheels help the machine to grip the mat. So they are important to have out when you are not doing something <laughs> where they need to be out of the way. Then I'm gonna go ahead and insert the mat into my machine. And then I'll hit the flashing go button. Then I'm going to remove this from my mat and continue cutting the rest of my white cardstock. Next up is my gold foil cardstock. So I'm going to place that in the upper left hand corner of my mat as always. And I did change over my cut setting. So I'm using the medium cardstock cut setting for this gold foil cardstock. Then after my Cricut measures my mat, I'll press the flash and go button to begin cutting all of my Monstera leaves. Once the foil cardstock is finished cutting, I'll remove it from my machine. And then I'm going to slowly flip the mat over and peel off all of my Monstera leaves. Some of them will probably stay on the mat and some of them will come off with the rest of the paper. So I'll just gently remove them and take my time. That way I don't bend or mess any of the leaves up. It makes it a little bit easier to peel these off if you leave that mat nice and bent. That way the edge kind of pops up for you and you can just slowly peel it off. Then I'll set all of these leaves aside until I'm ready to assemble 
the rest of my place cards. And lastly, I'll add my green cardstock to my mat. But because these also have a scoring line in them, my Cricut is going to ask me to score it before it actually cuts the paper. So I need to grab my scoring wheel and add it on to my quick swap housing here. And this is gonna go in clamp B. So I'll just open up my clamp and set my blade aside. I'll hold the scoring wheel so that the open back that's not covered in plastic is facing the machine and the plastic is facing me. And I'll add the scoring wheel into the machine and close clamp B. Then when my machine's ready, I'll load the mat into the machine. And when I press the flashing go button, the first thing it'll do is detect the scoring wheel and score. And then I'll switch out for the blade to cut. Then Design Space will prompt me to swap out the scoring wheel for the regular blade. So I'll place this back in clamp B and press go. Then when the machine is finished, I'll unload the mat and remove all of these pieces from the cutting mat. And now we have all the pieces that we need to assemble our place cards. So what I'll do first is go through and fold all of my place cards in half. And I can set them in place with a bone folder or even just with my scraper tool. And that just makes my crease nice and stiff. And then next, I'm gonna use some double-sided tape to add to the back of the white place card so that I can place it on top of the green place card. Cut off a little piece of tape and stick it to the back of each white place card. Then when you're ready to place the white place cards on top of the green ones, you can just peel the other side of the double-sided tape off of the place card, flip it over and center it, and push it into place. And then our place cards are almost done. We're just gonna add that little monstera leaf detail. So the way that I'm gonna do this last part is totally optional. You could just either glue or tape the monstera leaf to the corner of the place cards if you want. But I'm gonna use some 3D foam circles and I'm gonna stick those to the back of my monstera leaves so that it gives a little bit of a 3D pop off of the place card and just adds a little something extra. So I'm gonna take the dots and just place one on the back of each little leaf. And then when you're ready to place your leaf on your place card, all you need to do is remove the backing from that dot and stick it to the corner just like this. And it just adds a little bit of a 3D effect to your leaf and your place cards are ready to be labeled or used at your event. If you learned something in this video, don't forget to give it a like and make sure that you subscribe to DIY Alex for more videos a lot like this one. I love connecting with you guys on social media, so I'd love it if you'd use the links in the description below to find me on all of your favorite social media platforms. All the hearts.